Hello and welcome to this edition of God Day. And I'm really excited to be here today. I want to dive into um, a teaching that really helps us all to be freed up from the things that we're meant to be freed up from, from the blockages that are in us. And he's given, and the Lord doesn't leave us to guess. He gives us his, his word, which helps us and encourages us to be able to be freed up from those blockages. Maybe as a church, but also as individuals. He wants us to be free. He's given us life and life to the full, life indeed. And it's the truth that sets us free. Not positive thinking, not verses that puff us up, but in his word, the truth, the sword of the spirit, his word of God is the very thing that we're given so that we walk in the freeness and in the, the total abandonment that we can have unto Jesus. It's the truth that sets us free. And it's the truth that wants, he wants us to give us today. So I'm going to look at um, a verse in Song of Songs. And I'm going to read um, this verse out shortly. But I just want us to know a little bit about what I'm bringing as a bit of a background. The Song of Songs is one of the five books of the Megalot books. The Megalot books are five books which God has given to us. Um, and those five takes us to the greatest depth that we can understand the Bible to in um, the teachings of, uh, for, the, for the nation of, of Israel. He gave them four levels of understanding. There was the uh, Peshat understanding. Won't go into all the details here, but, anyway, but there's four levels. And there was Peshat would be like surface level. We would read the Bible as it is, and that's how we'd understand it. Then there was another level called Remeth understanding, which is a little bit deeper. We gain our understanding from it in, in the Bible, in some books, via verse, what verse of on verse means, and, and we understand it via that. There's a greater depth again, uh, a third level, direction or Derek understanding, which is quite deep. And we understand what the Bible is really trying to say to us through that. But then there's a fourth level called Sod understanding. Um, but it's actually, that word there means secret or, or mature. Word of God isn't meant to be secret, but it is veiled for those who want to dig deeper into his word. You know, the disciples were given understandings when others weren't. Why? Because they were hungry for the word of God. And I believe you are listening to this word today, this God day, because you're hungry for the word of God. And therefore, today is your day to be ministered to. Your day has this word for you to be freed up from the things you're meant to be freed up from. And you're meant to have no blockages. You're meant to be free and free indeed. And this word is for you today. So I want us to understand that this book, which is read to this understanding, this book of Esther, the other books are the book of Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, and this book, Song of Songs, um, are the five books which takes us to a greater depth they are, there's a beautiful hidden um, message in there, which for those who are discerning and hungry for the word of God, he unveils it to you. So that's what I mean by um, the Megalot books, and that's, this is one of them. And we can read those five books to this great depth. And what for? Not to show how clever we may be or how much knowledge we have, but so that we can go deeper in our intimacy with Jesus. Do you know, becoming mature in him isn't how much knowledge we have, but it's or how many churches we've opened or how many house groups we do. It's actually growing in, into, an, uh, into a, a relationship with Jesus is, is his ambition for us. And that is on how intimate we are with him. And this wonderful book, The Song of Songs, describes from chapter 1, verse 1, right through to the end of the book, on an intimate walk with our Lord and Saviour, the wonderful Jesus Christ. He is our Saviour. He is our Lord. But he wants that intimate relationship with us. And that's how he wants us to grow into that relationship, more and more closer with him. But we have things in us, and you will have things in you which are stopping you from flying. I know that in me, there's things that have stopped me and will continue. 
in the future, there'll be things that will want to stop me from flying for him. And we're to look at those things, turn away from them and carry on flying again. So in you today, he's going to pick out things that are preventing you from flying. And he wants to set you free from them. That's the wonderful word of God. So let's get straight into this verse, these verses in Song of Songs. They're in Song of Songs chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. And it says, You, you are a garden locked up, my sister, my bride. You are in a spring enclosed, a sealed fountain. Your plants are an orchard of pomegranates with choice fruits, with henna and nard, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with every kind of incense tree, with myrrh and aloes and all the finest spices. You are a garden fountain, a well of flowing water streaming down from Lebanon. Awake, north wind, and come, south wind. Blow on my garden that its fragrance may spread abroad and let my lover come into his garden and taste its choice fruits. There's a beautiful picture here. And God gives us this wonderful picture of a garden or a fountain in a garden. And if you have a, just picture now this, a, a beautiful fountain, you've seen them um, maybe in parks or even on roundabouts, these wonderful large fountains and the water spewing out of them, doing what they're meant to do. And God is giving you a picture saying, this is you. This is a picture of how we are meant to be. We're this wonderful tapestry, this wonderful flow of living water, spurning out all this water to everywhere, everywhere it touches. It's a beautiful sight. It's something that God says it's honoring and a blessing to him when he sees us as this garden fountain displaying God's glory as we fly this life with him. And he's saying, that's you. And he's also describing us in other ways too. In there, it calls us a sister and my bride. And that word in sister in the Hebrew is, is saying that we are related to him. Wow. We're at, why, how can we be, are we related to God? He's saying, by all means, I'm your father and you're my child. We have the same blood. We share the same blood. The blood of Jesus Christ bore you again. You became a child of God. <laughs> how wonderful. What great truths we already have. Even before he starts to unfold this beautiful picture, he says, let me tell you, you are meant to be this beautiful garden fountain. You are, you are my sister. You are related to me. You are an heir to the inheritance that I have prepared for you. You are related through the blood of Jesus and you are my bride. You know, this wonderful picture that we see all through, all through scriptures, that Jesus Christ the bridegroom shall return for his bride. That's us. That's me and that's you. Those who have said yes to Jesus but we, and we continue to follow him, those are his bride who he shall come back for. And on that glorious day when Jesus returns, the bridegroom shall keep his promise and return for us his bride. What a glorious day. The day. The day that we can look forward to. And the fact the Bible says not only look forward to it, Speed, it's coming. And how do we do that? What can we do in part of that? We can become all that he's created us to become. We can fly for him. We can spread this water that he's put in us, which we describe in a moment, and, and flow and be a glorious sight for him and all that we touch. But, he says, there's a stopper in the garden. There's something in us that must come out. And if that's describing you, which I know it will be, then this word is for you. And let me tell you, this is the truth because it's his word and it's the truth that sets you free. So this stopper, there's a stopper in this fountain. Yes, there may be some parts which, which come out. There may be some parts where the water does come out, but it's not in its full glory. It's not flying high. 
It's not touching all the areas around as it should do. It's not bringing the refreshment to the grass or the things around it. He wants us to be a super abundant life where everything you touch, life comes forth. You know, there's a beautiful picture in Ezekiel which talks of this stream coming from the temple of God. That stream is a picture of us who walk in the, in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. Streams of living water. And it, and it weaves around the, the, the rocks and the, the, the trees and the plants. But everywhere it touches, life comes out of it. And that's this beautiful picture of us in Ezekiel. Wherever we go, we can bring life and life in abundance. Beautiful. But this picture in Song of Songs is talking of a stopper. And what could that stopper be? I'm just going to read out a few things that I believe that that stopper can be within my experience. I've seen that that stopper could be unforgiveness. There could be an unforgiveness. In fact, that's, that's a, a large one, a large stopper that could prevent us from flowing. Another huge one could be pride. And we'll say, well, I don't have pride. But pride can be wanting to do things our way, not God's way. Because actually when you're going your way and not God's way, you're effectively saying, I know better than you, God. So pride can turn its ugly head and turn up in all sorts of places in our lives. And that can be a, a stopper that prevents the flow, that the, the normal, natural life of the fountain. And that's the same for us. The normal, natural life of a supernatural Christian on fire for God with this beautiful picture of being a fountain these things can stop us going your way. Maybe there's a fear in you that can also be this cork or this stopper, a fear of, of not doing right even. A big one is the fear of man. We can be so fearful of what man thinks even more than what God thinks. And I, you can see that we are frozen. We can be frozen because of fear and fear of man. And you know, an encouragement, we're not frozen people, we are chosen people. He chose us before creation, before you even formed, he chose you. It could be this stoppage could be um, a sin or a repeated sin, a cycle of sin that you just can't get out. It could be the lover of money. It could be your career. It could be doubt or continuous doubts, plagued by doubt in all sorts of things, the promises of God, in Jesus' promises, in Jesus himself. Doubt is obviously another big one. It could be our ambitions or anger or bitterness or depression or insecurity or our impatience or our jealousy or the list goes on. But these things can be stoppages or blockages in the normal function of the fountain of your life. And today, he wants to make a start in removing those. It's a wonderful picture that he's given. But I want us to look at something really beautiful in this reading. In this reading, it talks of and describes um, the things inside this fountain. I'll just read those out again a little bit to you. It talks of um, pomegranates, number one. It talks of henna number two. It talks of nard, number three. It talks of saffron, number four. It talks of calamus, number five. It talks of cinnamon, number six. It talks of incense, number seven, of myrrh, number eight, and of aloes, number nine. There's nothing that's coincidental in the Bible. In fact, in Luke 24, 44, Jesus says, don't change anything. Don't change a comma. Everything that's written in the whole of the Old Testament, and it will say in, in, the, in the Bible verse there, of the law and of the prophecies um, and of the Psalms, which is a, a way of saying the whole of the Old Testament. And Jesus says, and he stands up in Luke 24, 44, and says, all of the scriptures, all of the Old Testament, points to me, he says. Everything points to me. So something in this teaching 
points to Jesus and the things of Jesus, his ministry and his, and his, and his spirit, the Holy Spirit and of God. And you'll see that of those nine fruits and spices, you'll see in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the things of the spirit. Water is always the things of the spirit in the Bible. And what I want us to look at in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, as I read them out, is the fruit of the Spirit. So what we see is the water, this garden fountain, for it to flourish and flourish all the things around, this water, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit, must come out of us too. And what are the things of the Spirit? The two main things are the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is no surprise that when you turn to the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, we find them listed there. And I'm going to read them out to you now. We see that in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, one, is joy, two, is peace, Three, is patience, four, is kindness and goodness, five and six, is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we see that the things of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, symbolized by this water inside that fountain, the fruit of the Spirit of love, peace, joy, self self-control, goodness, faithfulness, all those things which are in that water, he wants us to be, get that blockage to come out and then flourish everywhere around. Can you see this imagery? It's beautiful. He's saying that the things of the Holy Spirit, the fruit, must come out. It's better for us. Isn't it wonderful when you feel love, when you're full of joy, when you have the fruit of patience, you have this inner joy as well and of, and of all these wonderful things that describes there in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And he wants us for our sake, for the people around us' sake and for God's glory, for his sake, for the blockages to come out so that this water filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit can come out too. That's his picture for us. Something else that's really incredible and it just, so, just fills me, and I hope with you, of faith and trust in his word. That what's the second thing of the Holy Spirit? Well, we know them to be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 11, it talks of the spiritual gifts. And I'm going to read those out to you now. It says, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit, the message of wisdom, number one. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, number two. To another, faith by the same Spirit, number three. To another, gifts, plural, gifts of healing, by that one spirit, number four. To another prophecy, that's five. To an, oh sorry, to another miraculous powers, that's five I think. To another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and number nine, to still another, the interpretation of tongues, nine. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one as he determines. What is incredible is that what we see, guys, in this teaching is this beautiful, accurate, accurate to the word description of what's in you. You are this garden fountain. You are this sister, this relationship to God related by the blood of Jesus. You are the bride of Christ, but this stopper that's in you, this stopper that's holding you back from the water, the well of living water he describes in Song of Songs, this garden fountain full of water, that water must come out. The fruits of the 
the, the Holy Spirit of love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control, that must come out. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, of speaking in tongues, of ter- interpretation of tongues, of healings, of miraculous powers, of words of wisdom, of words of knowledge, they must come out. Why must they come out? For you to become all that you were created to become, for those things to spread abroad, it says in Song of Songs, to flourish the environment that's around you. This water, this living water that's in you must come out for your sake and for the people around. It's wonderful. So how does it come out? How's this meant to work? Those stoppages or those things which may be very specific to you. I'd like just to, we're going to spend just a minute or two just contemplating what that means to you. It's great to hear the word of God, but I'm a firm believer when you hear it, you do it. And I was saying to you today, God is saying to you today that there's things in you that he wants out even more than you do so that you can become this wonderful garden. And these nine Spices and fruits that we see in Song of Songs are symbolic of the same nine fruits of the Spirit and the same nine gifts of the Spirit. There is no coincidences in God's kingdom. Isn't it wonderful? He's confirming his word through his word. Do you know, he doesn't leave this to chance. So as we will... And I'll ask you just to think and just ask the Holy Spirit because he actually gives us a guidance. He doesn't let us guess what we should do. He tells us. Let's go back to Song of Songs and see what his verses say. In there, in verse 15, it says, You are this garden fountain, a well of flowing water streaming down from Lebanon. But then in verse 16 comes the instruction. In verse 16, it says, Awake, north wind, and come, south wind. Blow on my garden, let its fragrance may spread abroad. My lover come into his garden and taste its choice fruits. What you see here is what we're meant to do. We're meant to ask for the wind. That word in Hebrew is ruach. It's the same word for the Holy Spirit. We're to ask the Holy Spirit to come, come Holy Spirit and blow across my garden so that the the blockages will be blown out, blown out the garden, blown out the fountain so that the water, this well of living water can burst into the environment around us. That's what he's asking us for us to do. So we have, God keeps it simple. He says for us to become all that we're created to become, for us to start flying for him so that this this streams of living water bringing life to wherever it flows to can become a reality on our lives. We ask the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the wind of God to blow across us and the corks will come popping out one by one, maybe all at the same time. For me, it was a mixture of both. And he's saying to us today, ask the Holy Spirit. In fact, do it now as I'm talking, because I'm going to turn this into a prayer shortly. But as, as we ask him, know that his word is true. He says, what you need, ask for. What, and if it, it, when it's in line with God's will, He says it's like a double-edged sword. When God speaks it and we declare it out of our mouths, that's called a double-edged sword. And he says, when you do that, it's done. We have to have no, we don't need any doubt. That's what double-edged sword means in the original meaning. When God says it, and he's saying it in his word to you today, and when we speak it out, it's done. No doubts. So know that when we declare and ask the Holy Spirit to come and blow across our garden, he shall indeed do that. And look what it says in the last part of that verse. Then the lover comes down and dwells and sees the good fruit that's going on. Jesus comes more into our life. We become more intimate with him. It's as if he comes and visits the garden and says, look at this good work 
my Holy Spirit, I have done for you. To bless you, to bless your environment, to bless the people around you, your families, your neighbours, your wife, your husband, your children. Living a life for Jesus is one of, is, is a beautiful life. It's one where people can see, wow, what's in him? I want a bit of that. I want a bit of what he's got. And your families will say the same. So I want to pray and turn this, this last minute that we have together into a time of prayer to be, for you to be released into your fullness. So I want to just close our eyes, for you to close your eyes just for one moment. Lord Jesus, I just pray for all you as you are listening to this word today, for them to know that they are a beautiful garden, for them to know that they're the bride of Christ, for them to know that they're related to you through the blood of Jesus, that you want them to be released into this wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and that you, Holy Spirit, now Come and remove those blockages, those things that are holding them back, whatever they may be, unforgiveness, pride, wrong ambitions, going your way. I pray that you blow across their garden right now, release them from them, forgive them, wash them clean, and let the goodness of your Holy Spirit, the fruit and the gifts, come flowing out. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.